this is Texas Tiger Digs. Uh, I don't know, a week, maybe a little bit more, a week and a half ago. I told you that I was getting a uh, coil for the Coin Master GT. And I was very impressed with its depth, but uh, I needed a, uh, a larger coil because I wanted to cover a lot of territory and maybe get another uh, inch or two depth. Uh, when I did the test against the Fisher F5 in a very uh, suboptimum uh, environment with EMI and RFI around, it did very well, uh, you know, while the uh, Fisher F5 was in the, uh, say, 5 to 7 inch range, uh, the uh, Coin Master was in the 8 to 10 inch range on most of the coins. You know, it's not precise because, you know, air tests are fallible and they're, they're subject to a whole lot of external factors. But however you weigh it, that was pretty impressive. So, uh, I decided to look for another coil. Now, there's a couple of drawbacks to the Core Master GT. One thing is uh, finding coils. Uh, there's not a lot of them, uh, you know, and uh, I eventually had to go to the Ukraine and get a nail coil. And uh, so this is exactly what I've got, a nail uh, 12 by 15 inch coil, 12 inch by 15 inch coil. And uh, I'm gonna open it. We're gonna see what it looks like. Um, it just arrived uh, this morning, so. Uh, I have no idea you know, how I made it, and it was a, a very fast shipment. You know, I expected it to be a little bit longer. I don't know if I just happened to get it lucky or what, but it was a very, very fast shipment. really nice and I got a warranty card here and it's for the uh, White's Prism and the Coin Master because we all know the Coin Master GT is formerly the Prism and uh, that's cool Neoteric Electronics Laboratory hmm. I never knew what nail meant you know what this is the Tornado coil It looks pretty good. It's got a coil cover. It's got uh, it's got a screw already here on, so uh, I don't have to uh, to use the one that's already on the system. Or I just put this one in a drawer in case I lose that one. But uh, huh, looks good. And it's. Yeah, considerably bigger, but not so big that it looks dumb. <laughs> now, dumb doesn't make it not deep, but you know, I just wanted something that, that this is not only uh, this is not only uh, a big coil. It uh, it looks proportional to a degree. So, there is one thing about the Coin Master. It's not the best balanced detector in the world. In fact, in one of my other uh, videos I did a, a minor adjustment to get another half inch out of it because I'm well, about 6'3 maybe 6'3 six, 6'3 three, six, three and a little bit maybe 6'3 and a half in shoes and uh, and that call was a little bit short the call uh, the the sweep of the call was a little bit short for me I had to reach reach for the soil basically so and, and that that is tiring so I like to see how this it the weight is good so I have to see how it works so Tell you what, I'm going to cut off uh, this part of the video. I'm going to put it on the Coin Master and we'll take another look at it when I get it up and going. Now, this is Texas Tiger Digs again on the second part of this. There was quite a little lag between the unboxing and getting the uh, coil. Uh, successfully on the uh, Coin Master GT. Now, uh, as you can see, it's, it's not like this is, was a difficult thing to do. You know, it's got to, you know, it's a common thing. But you see here, I've created a little neoprene spacer because uh, even with uh, the coil and, you know, the rubber grommets, etc., it was very, very loose. 
So it was flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and, and worse was to the sides. It'll still move to the side, but you have to make an effort because the rubber grommet is actually creating a more secure fit. Now, uh, because I made some alterations to this, I may have weakened this, uh, this lower shaft some, so I didn't want a lot of play to put too much pressure up here on the shaft. So uh, I had to get that uh, neoprene spacer, which is basically a neoprene washer, and I got it from my uh, neighborhood uh, uh, home improvement store. Wherever, whatever's in your neighborhood, Lowe's, Home Depot, or, or whatever hardware store, uh, you can find one with neoprene. And I would have preferred a, uh, a nylon washer, a harder washer, and I'm going to get one eventually. But I needed this to make sure it was secure. And I can't really blame the manufacturer, Nail, for that, because when you build a coil that covers several different types, several different machines, all you know using the same coil you know there's going to be some difference in the uh the area that you're going to clap on here and it's better to make it slightly too large and somebody can go out and get a neoprene or nylon washer to make up the difference rather than too small and you need a grinder and uh, to make up a difference and nobody wants to grind their coil in any case uh that's what it took to get this on Another thing is you have to, and uh, I'll mention this, you have to tighten this thing up pretty good. Because when I initially did it, it falsed pretty severely. So let me turn it on now. And I, now here I go. Now see, I'm getting falsing in here, but the falsing is related to the EMI in this room. And I am close enough to some metal sources here. For it to react, so so that's that's uh, what's happening. Here. These you know these big coils are not exactly friendly inside a house. In any case, uh, let me switch this off. Uh, that's where I am now, and like I said, you're going to see I'm going to run the uh, the air test, and we're going to see how it stacks up, and uh, you know if it just stacks up reasonably well with the larger uh, coverage of this coil. I should hit a few more targets and everything should work fine. So uh, I will uh, turn this off and we'll finish this thing off and uh, uh, probably end it there for today at least. Alright, uh, this is Texas Tiger Diggs. I actually plan to take this coil out in the field and actually uh, use it and uh, you know hit a few targets unfortunately it's very windy outside so filming is going to be almost impossible and uh, the parks that are close to me are uh, not guaranteed to show up uh, to give any targets that would give it a good test so I'm just going to do this little preliminary air test with it and uh, I'll let you look at it. Uh, I'm doing the best I can with this camera. I'm not sure how you're going to be able to see the gradations on this tape, but you should at least be able to see the marks enough to know that I'm giving you an honest measurement. So uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to test this with a quarter, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. And we're going to see how this is going to work here. I'm going to start with the uh, start denominationally. So I'm going to start with the penny and I'm going to see uh, what kind we're going to get. I'm going to announce the inches. Hopefully you'll see enough to understand I'm giving you an honest count. So here we go. I've got the, the uh, I've got the uh, tape measure attached with some Gorilla Tape where the end of the one inch, uh, no metal on the end, is directly up against the coil. So here we go. I'm going to try the penny first. It is sort of a crushed up penny, but it'll do. And here we go. Alright. I'm going to start it. Top all the way back. That's seven inches. Pretty good signal at eight.
Yeah, not not that good at nine. An occasional hit at ten. So, at the penny, I got ten inches. Nickel. with the nickel. Okay. With the dime. Nine inch. About ten, ten and a half inches with the dime. Finally, uh, the quarter. And these are all clad. Pretty good at ten and a half to eleven inches. Maybe a couple of broken signals between the eleven and a half and twelve. So that's the results of the test. It's pretty good. It's like an inch, an inch, maybe inch, inch and a half more than a stock coil. You know, that's I guess that's good enough, uh, especially good enough since you're getting more coverage with this coil. So you got a chance of hitting more targets. So, uh, well, that's the this is probably going to be the depths of my test today. Uh, there was something I did find out about it though. You have to really tighten that coil in because uh, before I tightened it, it was uh, sort of reactive and uh, staticky until I tightened it all the way and gave it a real good turn. Then it was fine. So that's uh, that's my uh, short little. Uh, not so great air test of the uh, Coinmaster GT with the nail tornado coil on there. So, uh, like I said, I'm ready to go use this in the field, uh, but uh, probably not today. Uh, so, it will probably be uh, maybe as late as this weekend because it's really not, uh, uh, not much uh, in the parks around here. Uh, so, I'm going to have to do a little driving. So, I will uh, catch you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, such as it is. And uh, I will uh, give you a good uh, report out in the field like I like to do uh, in the very near future.